Okay, here's a recording to try to help you out with uh, your field data collection. This would work for grade 11 or grade 12. Um, this one is predominantly set up for grade 12. Um, using EpiCollect 5, it's an online program. It actually connects to an app that you download through the Google Store onto your phone. I have a little Samsung phone. Um, just went straight through the Google Store, free download, and voila, it worked. Pretty certain it was free anyway. Um, and really quite easy to use. I went and watched a couple help files, watched a couple demos on how to set things up, how to play with it. Um, went outside and did some collecting of some fake data around the, the neighborhood. Um, and it, with a little bit of fine tuning, worked really, really well, which will work well on any of your field sites around um, to suit for that. So let's go through and show you how I've set up a field report you've got to set it up here in the epi collect on the computer first and then you can upload that and work with it on the phone while you're out in the field and then upload your data back to this so you can then transform that onto maps for your reports and into graphs for excel or anything else that you want to do so the first thing you have to do is create a project so if you create a project you then have to name the project i.e my survey a small description and a form name Keep it private and then create. I've already got one created, but that's how you create one. I'm just going to go to my projects. And the one I've created is called Year 12 Land Cover Field Data Collection. And I am the creator of it. So let's go and have a look at some of the details of this and how I set it up. You can set yours up the same um, or a little differently. It depends on how you want to do it. So you'd be asked to do a form builder. Now, when I first did this, it was a little tricky. Couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. Watched a few help videos and voila, managed to figure it out. No problems at all. So let's have a bit of a look at the form builder for this thing. And you'll see how I've set this up. So basically a form builder, it tells the program, what do you want to collect while you're out in the field? So the first thing I did was I added a location. So I just grabbed the location here and dragged it over to the actual form. So I could pick it up and move it over. I'm not going to do it this time. And in that, once you've got it there, you have to go over to the location and actually add a question text. And I thought, gee, that's confusing. Not sure what that is. So I just put the name location is. And that's essentially what it is. When you click on that, it'll ask you to press the little location button and it'll come up with um, a latitude and longitude coordinate for your data point, wherever you happen to be. Um, I would suggest trying to get that under five meters of accuracy. Now, it still won't be perfect, because if you think about five meters accuracy, that could be five meters to the left, right, and north, south. Um, I'll show you a little bit of a method on how to get an accurate um, data point or a more accurate one when we finish up here. We can fiddle around with Google Maps here, and I'll show you. So the next thing I did was um, I added a group. And the reason I added a group is I want a whole bunch of data um, for one spot. So just like the data table has, I'll have site number one. So I added a group, just dragged the group over to here. And then I started adding some things to the group. So I'm just going to hit edit group so you can see what I added. What I added to the group was just a bunch of numeric fields, just like a data table would have. So I dragged the numeric over. And then the first one I called site ID. Um, I add use answer as a title. And sort of the idea behind that was, is um, that it was the most important thing. Now, I'm not 100% certain if I got this spot on, but I thought it was important because every one of these sites needed an ID. Um, the second one I added, I dragged another new numeric over, and I called that transect distance in meters, and I said that answer is required. You have to have it. I'm intending to do from 0 meters through to 40 meters. That'll give me nine data points. Um, the next one, I put scale of human impact into mine, 1 to 10. I didn't say that was required. Um, and the reason was I'm not 100% certain if I'm going to use it, but I thought I'd just add it to the table um, and put it in. So my site is actually at the back of an urban development on a subdivision. So I suspect it'll be at that one will look pretty good. And I might be able to get on a graph and then maybe have... Um, maybe a correlation between the amount of human development and the amount of land cover change. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Got to collect the data first and see how it comes out. Okay, next one I've got ground cover percentage. I'm going to use a little toilet paper tube or a little uh, 
paper towel tube actually and I've got little crosshairs on it and I'm going to be able to do some estimates with that um, and that'll be a number you put a numeric number in and I've put down that the answer is going to be required for that site same with canopy cover I'm still going to use that same little tube I'm going to show you guys how to use it and I'll be looking straight up where I'm standing at the five meter mark and if there's any canopy there I'll do it as a percentage it's an estimate percentage and then the last one was vegetation height. Now this one I had to fiddle with um, after a bit of playing around the field and I'll show you what I did so you were more successful than I was on the first attempt. So I put it in as meters and it only took whole numbers, which isn't very good when I've got very low ground cover like grass, um, which might be only say five centimeters tall, which is 0.05 centimeters since it's a meter. Um, and we're using meters because there could be trees there as well, which are very tall. So I figured out if you go to advanced and change it from an integer to a decimal, it should work. I have not tested it fully in the field, so don't hold me to it, but I think it's right. Okay, so that's my group for data. I also want to collect at each point biodiversity data so I can sort of do um, a biodiversity sort of table and I can do the um, bit of statistics work um, for biodiversity um, index at a site so i need to collect the data at each site for all the biodiversity there and all, in other words all the plants that are there so what i've done again made a group by dragging the group up i show you what i did i've got edit a group and i've just added a bunch of numeric things in there as well you could put text in each of these as well and then do descriptors if you want um, you could even do photos i guess i don't know you can set it up with how, how you like you could do radio maybe plant one and maybe a good idea would have been to do this right underneath it um, and you might do plant one so this isn't actually a bad idea I might actually do this for all of them so I don't know if it'll work but I'm just going to add, do that and I'm going to add plant two so each one will have a photo at each site but that was going to I think that's going to start clogging up my um, phone my phone doesn't have much space in it so I'm decided to change my mind I'm going to remove that input remove it out I'm going to remove this one as well and just stick with my six plants I'm hoping six is enough um, I don't think there's a huge amount of biodiversity there if there's any more then you might want to just have a little notepad I'm taking one with me that I can always add a little bit of extra data so it might be site one you might have plant seven plant eight and I've noticed I've got number present because that's what's needed for our uh, statistics on biodiversity index if you choose to use it I suggest it it's a pretty good thing to use it's certainly high level work and it's not that hard to figure out and I think it'll graph very very well at each location so I would be collecting that as you can see here you would just put a number present okay the last thing I had was add a photo so each location um, I'm going to put down a quadrat and I'm going to take a photo I'm hoping that'll let me take more than one photo um, maybe it needs another add photo added in here I don't know um, so I'm going to play around with it a bit and see how it goes now the good thing with all of this is you'd be collecting it on the phone while you're there it immediately would upload back home so all your data is popped in at home and you've got it done in one hit and that's the idea is to get everything done in one hit so I would save the project normally I don't want to save the project I actually just want to go back to my files so I'm going to just go back here I'm not going to save it I'll just leave it the way it was and that's my field data collection so let me show you what it looks like so if I go back to my projects again I'm just going to show you how my data I collected a couple data points and I'm going to sort of show you how I ended up with um, how you can transform it onto a map how to extract it out as a table and how to fix up the um, location okay so now I've got my data I've collected in the field you can see I have two data entries here I'm going to view my data it comes up as a pretty nifty table here you can edit that table and I did actually I've actually edited the location a little bit because it's a little inaccurate and I did that by actually looking at the map and using Google Maps you can see I have site ID 1 site ID 2 I did a start and the end of a transect distance you can see I've collected some information like ground cover I just sort of um, well actually I didn't make it up I actually used it because I actually took some photos at the other end of it I actually had some lawn grass at site 2 and an aloe vera plant there so you can do a number of things with that you can take it into a table 
or you could take it as a map. So if I click on the table, and as I was just saying to my daughter, why isn't that working? And that's because it's already in the table view. So what a fool I am. If you go to the map though, you'll see actually where the map is. Now, one thing I noticed when I did this, I went to satellite. So I went to this little thing here and went to satellite and noticed that the, my original point was down here. It was in the wrong spot. I know it was in the wrong spot. And I can actually tell you that this data point is in the wrong spot here because I actually measured it over here. Now, that's a little bit of a problem. That's because of the inaccuracy of GPSs. So what I actually did was, is I actually went to Google Maps. So I think the solution to the um, geolocation not being perfect because we don't have a differential GPS is to be able to go onto Google Maps. And I brought up a Google Maps of the same area and I know where I actually did my transect. So I can get a start location by going onto Google Maps and just clicking right on a spot where I started and it comes up with the location. So with that, all you'd have to do is change the last three digits of the location. So it says minus 23, 339, 176. I could easily go into the table and then edit that. And I edited the last three digits here and I edited the last three digits because that were actually it was this one here that was my start point. And you could go along for each one of these and go, okay, well, I went along five meters. Looking at the scale down here at the bottom, that's a, not very far. It's a little bit of an estimate. And I went to about here for my second data point. And there you can just change the last three digits. What this map is actually very accurate because you're actually picking the spot on Google Maps. And then you can get the location off here. It's not a perfect setup. It's just because the GPS on your phone won't be that accurate. It'll be actually up to 10 meters out minimum just because of uh, just... You, you need a ground source, that's the problem. But that'll give you a good location, a transect that hopefully works nicely on a map like so, um, and then we'll be able to have data for each of these points.